Hi, I'm Josh Kerr, and welcome to another Death Battle Prediction video. First, Chuck Norris vs. Sega de Sanchiro. Um, overall, this fight went kind of as expected. Throughout the debates, it was mostly just tossed around whether or not this was a fight to be taken seriously. And based on what they showed, evidently it was kind of a joke fight from the start, which I'm absolutely okay with, and it was quite entertaining, especially when they brought out the, a lot of the memes during the fight itself like with the third fist from his beard and such. Um, the animation was good, and because the research itself is by nature flawed, I don't have any real issues with it. Um, there's nothing else to really talk about for that one, so I'm just going to hop right into uh, Guts vs. Nightmare. So when I first heard about this match, um... I have I had a little bit of knowledge on Guts, enough to look at Nightmare and say he's getting totally fucked up in this fight. Um, so I'm going to go into some of the stats, and I'm going to show you basically where this lies in terms of stompiness. Um, we'll start with Nightmare. Uh, he's, with Nightmare, it's not as much important about Nightmare himself. What's important is Soul Edge, because Nightmare essentially is Soul Edge. Um, it also depends on what version of Nightmare they're going to be using. He has uh, th four forms throughout the series so far. He has uh, the mode when he's as Siegfried, um, the mode when he is just the empty armor, uh, Graf Dumas, which is at near the start of Soul Calibur V, and then he's got his little girl form when he's pure Omega, because that technically counts in a way i don't know how they're if they're going to use that one but it does technically count um now for an important part of soul edge is when it's destroyed when soul edge is destroyed its spirit goes into something called astral chaos uh to regenerate um this makes that's what makes it so that the sword can be destroyed and then come back in a later game. It's basically just a really, really long time regen factor. Um, in terms of his story, uh, Nightmare actually doesn't have a very good track record. He kind of has a fighting game villain syndrome, where his main point of existence is to get shit stomped by other characters. Um, he lost to a team up of both, uh, of Kilik and shang -Gua. He beat Raphael, though Raphael still got in a hit and destroyed Soul, destroyed Soul Edge. Um, he lost to Algol, though there's no shame in that considering Algol's probably the highest tier character in Soul Calibur. Uh, he lost to Siegfried. He beat normal Patroclus. He lost to Pyrrha. Um, he lost to Zvi, which is embarrassing as hell. And he lost to... <laughs> he lost to Pyrrha... So he lost to Patroclus as Pyrrha Omega. Um, in terms of stats themselves, uh, a lot of his feats are really unquantifiable because we haven't really seen them. Some of the stuff that he can do in cutscenes is like uh, cutting down horses in a single swing, uh, killing f five to ten people with one wide swing with a sword. Um, he can throw people like Astaroth into the air, which is... It's there, so... That's basically the extent of what we've seen of his strength. And in the Death Battle preview, they stated that he destroyed Castle Castle Ostr Ostrenburg, I think it's called, um, with one swing. That did not happen. Not how they stated it. Uh, what actually happened was that uh, the clash of Soul Edge and Soul Calibur... Uh, when it was wielded by Siegfried and Nightmare, basically the clash led out a pulse of energy that, as it says, gradually destroyed the castle. So, chalking Nightmare up to building Buster level is dubious at best. Um, for speed, um, he would probably get scaling to characters like Mitsurugi and Ivy, who are bullet timers, but... For the purposes of a death battle, when he himself doesn't have the feats for it, he's probably going to be just represented as peak human. 
Uh, in terms of strategy, in combat itself, he tends to have mostly just an overwhelm tactic. Um, when he was Graf Duma, he did have strategic mindset in how he was going to conquer Europe, but in combat, he still just defaulted to his typical bomb rush tactics. Um, his durability, other than gameplay, he's mostly featless. He's basically died when he's gotten stabbed by things like Soul Calibur. Um, in gameplay, though, he can have the typical God Impaled, still kept fighting kind of thing. But again, he's mostly featless, which is part of the problem with this fight. Um, for abilities for this guy, he's got his massive claw arm, which he can often use to grab people. Um, he's got lots of surprisingly fast swings out of a heavy character like him. He's got soul per pulses, which he can just basically focus and make a pulse of soul energy come from himself. He tends to do this when he picks the person up with his claw hand and then uses the pulse. Uh, he uses both electric and fire magic, um, massive heavy swings uh, that are usually portrayed in series as unblockable attacks. Um, and he has a critical finish, which basically is just a bigger soul pulse. He raises his sword, does a soul pulse, and it kills the person. So, maybe. Um, and then he has soul possession, which he can do if someone is holding soul edge or has a fragment thereof inside themselves. Um, though, if they only have a fragment, it takes a very, very long time. So for characters like Sophia, it took easily years for any effect to start showing. Um, then he has his form Night Terror, which basically turns him into the Mega Lobster of Death, and it increases his stats, he gains laser beams and flight. To what degree? We don't know, because... Night Terror is mostly feetless as well. It destroyed a statue, though. That's all we really know for that. Um, so now let's get into Guts. Um, I, I, I'm just going to let them go ahead and describe his backstory, because he's got a dark-ass backstory, and from what I've seen in the preview, I'm glad that they're not playing Grandma's Tiptoes around the major issues of it. There is the fact that, yes, there's rape everywhere enough to bitch slap Game of Thrones. Um, and the origin of his name itself is creepy to the least, given that he basically woke up in his dead mother's guts when he was a kid, and that's what the mercenaries thought to name him for some reason. Um, the anime itself actually ended significantly before the manga is at which means there's a chance he won't have his berserker armor or the dragon slayer which would be absolutely asinine they have to use that shit because that's part of his character um in terms of feats he there's several characters that he's beaten but i was actually unable to find most of it um and it's getting pretty close to the mark here and i can't bug uh, proto for more stuff um, So basically he killed loads of apostles which are people who are demonically enhanced basically he's killed tons of things like snake demons uh, uh, Corundum demons actually the corundum dragon I think um, Overall point is that he's killed things that are way out of any normal man's league and there's lots of them um, and in his setting, he's basically beaten everything short of the God Hand Witcher for individuals who are basically the top tiers of his setting. Um, so for his stats themselves, you can go into Strength, which he managed to catch a falling 30-ton mast, and he's pushed back that Corundum Apostle, which is easily a multi-ton feat. Um, his speed, he can move his greatsword faster than the eye can track, um, which was calculated to being about Mach 6. Um, 
And for him to be swinging his sword that fast, which is a 400 pound sword, mind you, that also carries over to being a strength feat. Um, for strategy, he is extremely crafty, shockingly, and, um, and he comes up with interesting ways to win, such as one time when, uh, an enemy was very fast and it was like a moth demon with, like, a stinger, and in order to beat it and make it so it couldn't dodge his attacks, he, like, took the stab through the head and just bit down on the stinger so that it couldn't pull out, and then that's when he killed it. So, he's perfectly willing to do absolutely crazy bullshit in order to win. Um, durability. He falls from massive heights, uh, he's been blasted by building level godly electricity, um, his berserker armor makes him a complete bitch to kill. Complete bitch to kill. Um, for his equipment, he has the Dragon Slayer Sword, which is a massive sword that can cut on the astral plane. Where have we heard the word astral recently? So then he has the Berserker Armor, which makes it so that as long as he has a drop of blood left in him, he can continue fighting. The armor itself has the most bizarre way of patching wounds ever. It like creates spikes and stabs the wound closed, and that does not sound pleasant in any way at all. <laughs> um, then he ha and it's also increasing his stats by ten. So a lot of his feats from when he didn't have the armor now become exceptionally powerful. Um, then he has his arm cannon which he got after he had to gouge off his own arm. Yeah, that dark stuff. Um, so this cannon, he can basically make it fire from wherever he is. He usually has a wire that comes up to his mouth here so that even if he doesn't have access to one of his arms, he can still use it, and it's pretty powerful. He also has a apparently automatic crossbow, even just judging by the first episode of Berserk, he fires this thing, and it's automatic. Um, he also has explosive bombs that he can throw, like grenades almost, and throwing knives, which he is shockingly skilled with. Um, he can apparently hit two central arteries, one of which is good for immediately making someone pass out, the other one is good for immediately killing them, and he can consistently hit that on people that are moving on horseback. Um, makes him very, very tricky to be able to avoid the attacks of. So, overall, we have Guts, who is superior in every stat. Every single one. I can't think of something that Nightmare hasn't beaten in. So then we have to go to, is there any way for Nightmare to win? Well, yes. If Guts is possessed, then Nightmare will win. However, uh, Nightmare's possession, one, seems to work on a long time scale. He has never, ever been shown to immediately possess someone. Two, that would require the assumption that Guts is going to kill Nightmare and then look at Soul Edge and think, yeah, this is better than my sword, and take it. There's a lot of things wrong with that. One, it's not better than his sword, because his sword has done a lot more. And it can cut on the astral plane, something Soul Edge cannot do, and something that Guts needs. He needs that for his own story. Um. He also knows not to play around with demonic bullshit. He hates demonic bullshit. So when he sees a giant pulsating eye on a sword, he's going to look at that and go, It's demonic. I'm going to kill it. So then we have, okay, well, astral chaos is a thing. He, why would it not be that Guts would cut the sword and then the sword would go to astral chaos and just come back later? One, we're going to get into that infinite loop of Soul Edge tries... Guts wins. So Ledge tries. Guts wins. Two, it's not going to get to that point because the Dragon Slayer can cut on the astral plane. So, 
even when he makes that first cut, it's going to completely destroy Soul Edge's soul. Um, so really speaking, and, and then some people have brought up Mind Possession, which apparently he has, but I have not seen feats for, and I'm a decent sized fan of Soul Edge. Sorry, Soul Calibur. So even taking into account Mental Possession, um, Guts still has a counter for that. The Berserker armor actually has something in it called the Hellhound, which is kind of a demon thing that wants control over Guts' mind, and it is uh, an exceptionally powerful being. So, if Nightmare decides he wants to try to inch in on the Hellhound's turf, the Hellhound isn't going to have any of that bullshit and it's going to defend Guts' mind. Um, a lot of people are making very silly assumptions in regards to that, which is that Guts' mind can't handle attacks from two places at once, but the Hellhound isn't going to be working with Nightmare, it's going to be working against him. Because obviously the Hellhound isn't going to want Nightmare to claim what he has. So I see no merit in that argument either. In the end, we literally have an open and shut fight. It's most of the question is literally what happens after the fight. Because in terms of stats, Nightmare is fucked beyond any possibility. Um, so it all just comes down to how they interpret Guts' personality, in all honesty. And I honestly think that there's very few ways you could view him other than Demonic Sword, I'ma kill it. Um, and that should be it for this one. I'm really looking forward to the fight because I'm also nervous about that because the social justice warriors everywhere. Um, so far, they've been good with it. However, if they do anything similar to what they did with Epion versus Tiger Zord, <sighs> then there exists the chance that they're going to noin Casca. In Epion vs. Tiger Zord, uh, Zex's obsessive protection over Noin was considered a weakness. So they had her killed right at the start of the fight. Guts is protective of Casca, like Zex is protective over Noin times about 40. So if they decide that they're going to go that exact same route, there's a chance that Nightmare will be killing Casca, which that would, in honesty, leave a really, really, really bad taste in my mouth, because that's just absently slaughtering a child-minded rape victim. And, I don't know, that's just something that I don't think they should do. There are lines, just kind of ignore that. Don't ignore it, actually, but don't be that absent-minded about it. Because that is a major issue. And they've done a good job of representing it so far. I just don't think it's a good idea to single out a character like that. Mm. Overall, I probably won't be too, too pissed if they do, but I will be cringing like hell if they do. Um, so that's all for this one. Uh, I will see you guys next time for Lex Luthor vs. Iron Man, because that one's being kept a secret pretty well. All right, have a good one.